jetzt in circa 20 Sekunden dann starten. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, a hearty welcome to our today's AIES talk on the subject of Iran nuclear deal, uh, objectives, obstacles and opportunities. We rather uh, will go to the obstacles and the opportunities. And it's my special pleasure to welcome as our guest speaker today, Dr. Arian Fall. Dr. Arian Fall, uh, yeah, we had already the opportunity uh, to get to know him. Uh, he is an expert for, expert for the Middle East and especially for Iran and also the JCPOA. Uh, he made his doctorate in Vienna. Uh, he is teaching at uh, the Military Academy in Wiener Neustadt and also at the Diplomatic Academy in Vienna, and he is editor and uh, uh, the chief of foreign policy for uh, the Diplomatic Circle magazine. It's a great pleasure to have him here. Uh, welcome, Dr. Arian Fall. And uh, I will immediately try to uh, get into uh, today's affairs. Yeah. The last week was a very interesting one. Uh, all the world was looking at Vienna uh, and looking for a possible outcome uh, of this round of world powers and Iran uh, on resuming negotiations uh, on the JCPOA, uh, the so-called nuclear Iran deal. And it was highly interesting, of course, because this was the first round that a new delegation under the vice uh, foreign minister of Iran, uh, Mr. Kani, came together with a big delegation, 40 people, uh, several vice ministers, and also the vice governor of the National Bank here to Vienna. And everybody was waiting uh, for results but there were no results. Uh, at the end of those negotiations, it rather was seen as a more or less setback due to the fact that the Iranian side had not agreed uh, and had not accepted uh, the compromises that uh, were spoken about uh, with their predecessors before the election. And so far, my first question will be, uh, to Dr. Arian Fall. Uh, was it a big surprise that uh, there was no result? Uh, wonderful. Good afternoon. And uh, I'm glad to be back uh, in uh, one of your talks. And let's go in medias res. And I would say no, not at all. It was not a surprise. Everybody expected that, of course, we uh, face a new a circle of uh, negotiations, new faces, new atmosphere, new chemistry, uh, the whole uh, setup with all the years of Rohani and uh, his team, above all um, former um, Foreign Minister Javad Zarif and his uh, first deputy uh, related to the JCPOA, Mr. Ali Arachi, they are all gone now. They took their time to introduce uh, the subject technically, politically, and also uh, in uh, coordination with the Iranian Majlis to the new team led by Mr. Bareri Kani, who is at the moment uh, replacing Mr. Arachi and the head of the delegation in Vienna. And it took several months. So we have new faces. We have uh, new approaches because, as you know, since the election of uh, President uh, Ibrahim Raisi, Iran's uh, self-confidence raised up for the known reasons. And they try to put on the table at the beginning of the new circle of uh, negotiations that the talks are dealing with a 
different reality. That's why it's not at all a surprise that first of all, we have those uh, views, which are at the moment not the same, but I would say there is still a window of hope. Yeah. And do you see any specific message uh, the Iranian team uh, tried to send, uh, not only uh, to the negotiators of, of the European powers and also China and Russia, but also to the global public? Well, um, first of all, we have to put in mind that uh, even outgoing pragmatics in Tehran uh, could not possibly turn back a clock uh, that uh, Trump had ripped both hands off. That means there is um, the b belief circulating that um, all the deal from 2015 was a swindle because the Iranians never got what they were promised to. So they try now to get some kind of guarantee, some kind of security, some kind of uh, stability on uh, special facts, uh, above all, on lifting the sanctions. And the big, big, uh, let's say, obstacle in the whole uh, uh, period of the talks is and will be, of course, the subject of sanctions. Why? It's very easy. Uh, in two sentences, we can uh, conclude that Iran wants uh, there at uh, once that a very harsh sign of uh, sanction lifting is sent by the west and then as a second reaction they are agreeing to fulfill their commitments concerning jcpoa um, and all the nuclear related talks but what we have to uh, put in mind and to compare that a possible jcpoa 2.0 will never be exactly the same as in 2015, because the realities and uh, the level of enrichment, the level of knowledge, and also the circumstances regarding the new Iranian government and regarding, of course, the uh, purpose uh, with uh, the, the program the Iranian delegation came to Vienna is totally different and the approach is totally different uh, if we compare it to Arachi and the former team of uh, President Rouhani. Yeah, and I guess this probably also uh, was at least part of the message that they wanted to demonstrate not only for the negotiators at the other side, but also for their home public, you know, we are not in a hurry. We will not concede easily uh, to to any demands from the Western side. Uh, we are in a rather strong uh, position. There is no immediate need for us uh, to get into easy uh, and, and, and very quick solutions, I guess, this problem. And I guess everybody in reality could expect something that, of course, uh, the new president that used to be rather skeptic towards uh, the JCPOA, uh, would not easily go into negotiations, but uh, rather be, uh, well, quite prudent and make uh, probably make st step by step. And of course, the first round certainly was more or less the presentation of their official position. And therefore, for me, uh, the next question will be, you know, today, they have been resuming now uh, the negotiations in a, another round. Uh, do you think that there could be hope for some progress or at least the situation uh, that uh, it will not be the end of the negotiations? Yes, I do, of course. There is always hope and I see a very uh, nice window of hope in the whole process. Uh, Mikhail Ulyanov, the Russian ambassador in Vienna, tweeted just yesterday that contacts with the United States of America and with the Islamic Republic of Iran uh, prove that both sides are very serious, but they have different approaches. Um, 
the window of hope is that they find a solution to uh, get uh, everybody's needs in um, a certain package of uh, a pretext. The Iranian, as you know, offered two different papers on this um, last week's talks of the seventh round of the nuclear talks. Uh, and those papers were the reason why some Western politicians said they were unhappy with their latest results of last week, because these two new papers presented by the Iranians are a little bit different concerning vocabulary, concerning approach and concerning the content. Uh, when it comes to the last six rounds, uh, finished uh, till end of June with the former uh, team by Mr. Arachi. That means in summer we could say we have been a little bit closer to uh, JCPOA 2.0, but now uh, the window of hope is uh, quite existing because they were holding consultations in their respective capitals over the weekend, as you know, now they came back and the meeting of the Joint Commission of the Nuclear Deal, the JCPOA, is going on. And those two draft uh, proposals by the Iranians are, um, let's see, uh, say, uh, the base of a new system, of a new approach. The first one, is a paper about lifting sanctions. The second one is a paper about nuclear commitments, both uh, written and um, concluded by Iran. But one important thing we should take uh, in mind is uh, a little remark about the whole sanctions issue, okay? We have just to put in mind that some uh, parties, they urged that uh, topics like the missile program, like human rights, like sponsoring of terrorists, like Iran's activities, should be included in a new JCPOA 2.0. Just to remind as a fact, in the over 160 pages of the original paper of JCPOA 1, there was never a word about human rights, nothing about the missile program, nothing, nothing about uh, sponsoring of terrorism and such things. This was a ra uh, really a pure nuclear deal. So the Iranians under this government will not agree to include one of those topics inside this package. And the other thing, the second remark about the sanction, which is um, probably even more important, why they have some fights, uh, verbal fights about uh, the context and the content is even before Donald Trump tore up uh, the deal and reimposed sanctions uh, intended to uh, strangle Iran's economy, the US Treasury under former President Barack Obama, as you know, uh, used an array of non-nuclear sanctions that uh, in effect kept Iran out of the dollar system and cut it out from international um, trade and uh, from international banking, deterring trade and investment. That means um, the problem that of mistrust is the first problem, which must be resolved in Vienna. Then we go uh, into media's race and into the content. First of all, there is a big mistrust that this causes this, uh, let's say, cloudy atmosphere. And uh, the window of hope is that they could at least at the beginning try to reduce the level of mistrust and then they can start to uh, develop the proposals made by the Iranians. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly mistrust is uh, the big problem and also the question how to get uh, new trust between the different partners. Uh, and I mean, if we ask ourselves the question, I mean, what does it make so difficult besides the question of uh, mistrust or why is there so much mistrust? Uh, where do we stand now? Because on the one hand, we have different actions from uh, the Iranian side as a reaction because Trump has left the deal. So far, where do the Iranians stand now with their nuclear program? Well, uh, first of all, we have to see that um, the enrichment is the main point, which is a case of interest. 
they raised it from originally 4.5% uh, to 60% and also the level of centrifuges and the level of uh, nuclear activities. Um, but one, what is disturbing Iran the most is that the other part, let's say now the 4 plus 1, former 5 plus 1, they are not accepting one fact, which is always on the Iranian way of thinking, the main problem of this whole reason why they have to be here in Vienna and to um, have new rounds of talks. Iran fulfilled its commitments from the beginning of the deal in 15 reports, quartal reports of the International Atomic energy agency that means of the iaea from starting the french national day let's say uh, july 14th 2015 till uh, 15 reports later till 2019 um, the iranians fulfilled all the commitments that sentence includes that even after trump decided in may 2018 to exit unilateral from the deal and from the origin based on a UN uh, security resolution from the original five plus one plus European Union, uh, it remained only four plus one plus, uh, plus European Union. The Iranians uh, continued to fulfill their nuclear commitments uh, like one year more than uh, the exit of the US. And now, while we are approaching uh, new negotiations in Vienna, the US just settled uh, new sanctions, as you know, against Iran. So, um, and also during summer and before summer, it has been a certain um, program inside the US policy that we must uh, keep the Iranians uh, with a harsh warning that means if you're not co cooperating, we will uh, just um, raise the pressure. And that was the reason why they uh, decided, even the new Biden administration decided to uh, impose new sanctions on Iran, not always nuclear related. Also some are since uh, Biden is, took uh, office in January, some of the sanctions are against uh, some Iranian politicians, some against institutions, some against uh, some companies, just with one aim to show we still follow this path of we must um, keep the pressure alive. And this is not making any good impression to the Iranians. And the second thing is uh, the reason for mistrust is the new team uh, of um, Joe Biden, including Mr. Malley, who is the, uh, the US uh, ambassador here, the special envoy for the nuclear talks. And of course, um, Mr. Sullivan, who is in the National Security Council of the US and Ms. Wendy Sherman as the deputy foreign minister and uh, related to the JCPOA and Mr. Blinken, they all had um, to uh, release a very dry and uh, bitter message to the Iranians. We can only conclude and promise a new agreement till the end of the term of Joe Biden. We don't know what's going to happen with the next US government. And that includes and brings the next problem on the table. That means the Iranians are forced to fulfill all their commitments again based on 2015, which is not realistic anymore. But at the same time, the US part is um, making clear from the beginning, listen, this time we are not giving you any um, pink balloons as promises. We are just saying you the truth. Uh, you have to know we are only able to guarantee in between the period of the term of Joe Biden, because if uh, it happens and the next one will be from the Republicans, it can also happen that uh, they will again uh, have a totally new approach uh, when it comes to JCPOA. Yeah, this certainly is a big, big question and uh, maybe also one of the reasons, you know, that there are no direct contacts at the moment. Uh, how do you see the situation that 
uh, the Iranians make their negotiations with the three European powers uh, and China and Russia. And the Americans are not present, but just next door in a hotel and uh, indirectly informed uh, by the representatives of Europe what is going on. Uh, how do you look at this situation? This is a very bad situation. Actually, it was the same. We can compare it to when Iran and Saudi Arabia did not have any direct contacts. They always had some kind of um, message transferring between the Iranian and the Saudi uh, oil minister in the OPEC. So it's the same now in JCPOA. It's uh, never good in diplomacy when parts are not at the same table. But at least, and this is the window of hope and the positive point, we always try to find uh, the the full part of the glass of water, not the empty one. So that means the full part would be the Americans are as interested as the Iranians that they will not leave Vienna with empty hands. I spoke with a lot of people during the last days and also with high-ranking diplomats and the tenor is very clear. They really are... Um, not here to waste time. This is uh, something I really believe in. And uh, even if they say Iranians are wasting time, that's not like this. I give you two um, examples as a proof. Iran has um, decided to come up to Vienna with over 40 people. That's more than the team of former negotiator Arachi. So mm -hmm. the number of foreign ministers, deputy, that means deputies of foreign minister Amir Abdullahian, is three, three deputy foreign ministers in Vienna. That's a big sign of respect and importance of the matter of the subject. So nobody can say Iran doesn't care. So the number of the, the, the um, composition of the delegation is really uh, technical, and economical experts are assisting the whole team. That's the first example. And the second example is the supreme leader himself urged the Iranian parliament, which is, as you know, the much less very, very uh, skeptical towards the deal. The supreme leader gave the permission to Mr. Barrikani to um, show his goodwill I quote the word goodwill uh, to the Vienna talks. That means it's in the huge interest of the Iranians that they have an outcome. It's not like this that they say, okay, now we achieved a lot of new um, goals when it comes to the nuclear energy and we don't need the West. No, the Iranian economy needs the lifting of the sanctions really, really very, very badly. And that means that they will try to find a situation that nobody is losing its face. I think this will be the crucial point. And this will also be the point where, like in um, the Million Show, you know, you have some jokers. You can call somebody, you can make 50-50, you can ask the public. And I think we can compare it, if we want to be a little bit humorous, to this and say the talks, they will need some jokers. And those jokers are able to develop this window of hope by building bridges and by settling new approaches, which can be, not at the moment, but in a closer future, can be uh, offering some results at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, maybe not breaking up the negotiations is one side, but bringing uh, real results is the other one. And uh, uh, if I just take, you know, uh, a message that Trita Parsi, who probably is the best Iran expert in the United States and obviously also pretty close to the Iranian uh, government usually, you know, uh, he more or less, uh, I would not so pre predict it, but uh, showed that there could be a similar situation uh, as in other fields. No breakdown of the negotiations, but the negotiations falling into coma, which would mean nobody wants to overtake the responsibility uh, that uh, 
that uh, they are not successful. Uh, nobody wants to take responsibilities, but uh, and this means that they will not stand up. But on the other hand, there will be no results, and therefore they will go on uh, in some waves or whatever. But uh, there will be no result. So far, what is the key of interest for the American side and the Iranian side, as you as far as you see it? So, I think that uh, the most important thing is for the Americans that Iran will not get the nuclear weapon and Iran will not get the power of a certain capacity when it comes to nuclear energy to use it in whether ways we are talking about 90 percent enrichment as you know when we are talking about the bomb now they have 60 so um, the the window till the day X is not so far away from the perspective of the Iranians. So that means first thing is, if Iran would get capacity of um, those things, it would be a role model for other countries in the region. And that's the fear of the Americans. So that means Iran must uh, be under the watchdog of the agency and fulfill its commitments again, and be able to use nuclear energy peacefully, but under no circumstances to use uh, those capacities to develop nuclear weapons. That's the American aim, number one, because it's a question of security. It's a question of calming also Israel and Saudi Arabia, the important neighbors, which are always now under um, these um, productive sides of the talks, they are always sending some um, poisoning comments to that Americans and all the other parties should stop immediately all talks in Vienna. Israel and Saudi Arabia are not uh, at all happy with the nuclear deal, as, as you know, and they want the talks as soon as possible to stop because they say um, Iran is only wasting time. And this is the, the American uh, approach, okay? And for the Iranians, as I mentioned before, there are three uh, basic um, goals. The first one and the most important one I mentioned before is the economical one. That means Iran's economy depends on the fact whether it can be represented on the market or not. That means we need investments, we need an uh, um, uh, the SWIFT system, we need uh, financial transactions, we need banking, we need uh, import and export with the world. That's the number one. The second important thing, of course, for Iran, as you know, as the most important sector in the economy is oil. Before Trump left the deal, uh, you know, just to remember also uh, certain statistics that people can feel how important it is for Iran, they were able to um, sell over 2 million barrel oil per day into the world market. That was before uh, Trump exit, um, at this exit of the JCPOA, the US exit. Now it's over uh, third parties with less prices and less income, only 600,000 barrel a day, per day. That means the second uh, important aim of Iran is Get, getting a um, revival of its status, its status in uh, selling oil and being present at the global market. And the last and also very important aim of the Iranians is, as you know, whenever something gets wrong um, in an international issue, you can see social problems inside Iran. And as a fact and as a consequence of the harsh sanctions in all different fields, we face enormous problems. You remember when we spoke about the new Iranian president, Ebrahim Raisi, I was mentioning the seven big problems he's uh, struggling with at the beginning of his pres presidency. So we have this unemployment, we have this inflation, we have these uh, problems with the protests in all the cities at the moment. While we are talking here, um, there are huge protests in one of the biggest cities in Iran, Isfahan, uh, due to economical problems. And people are really, they have enough of politics and they want just to survive and have a normal daily life. So 
for Iran, those three uh, main goals to have a comeback in the economy, to be able to sell oil and to avoid uh, protests and um, a development that could be difficult and dangerous for the regime itself. That's the important uh, approach Iran is sitting on the table here in Vienna. And maybe you allow me one last sentence about this. That's also the reason why people say, what is the, um, the big problem when it comes to the elaboration of the next step in the talks? The biggest problem in elaboration and procedure is, Iran says, first lifting of the sanction, then we fulfill our commitments. The Americans and the other parties say, let's do it step by step. We give you something, you give us something. And the Iranians say, no, this is a procedure question. So we have to um, make a division be between uh, the procedure and the content. We have also disagreement when it comes to procedure. And this is a technical thing, which is basically uh, very important when it comes to chemistry. If our chemistry is better, we are um, rather able to find solutions if the atmosphere is better for technical problems and procedure problems. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of uh, questions the Western side uh, does have for the Iranians. It's not only the question of enrichment, uh, the 60%, it is also uh, the question of the centrifuges it is also the question of Fordo, uh, because Fordo cannot be uh, controlled from outside because it was constructed underneath the earth. And therefore, of course, uh, this is an opportunity for Iran uh, to make developments that cannot be controlled by the Americans or the Israelis, or, uh, whoever. And insofar, there is a lot of questions and maybe also uh, those different questions and also the different sanctions uh, might offer some opportunity to have some progress. But uh, my more or less uh, last bigger question is, if we look now to our own interest from the European side, what is the European interest? I mean, uh, why uh, are we negotiating uh, this question so much? Although it used to be more or less a difference between Iran on the one side and America uh, and Israel at the other side. Well, it's uh, very, very easy to explain because you, it's in the main interest of Europe that there is a stability in the Middle East. As this is a turbulent time when it comes to nine or ten different problems in the region, starting from the Lebanon, going uh, further to the Israel and uh, Gaza problem. And when we go back to Yemen and to Afghanistan and Iran and Saudi Arabia, Pakistan and India, when we go further to Iraq, to Syria. So there are lots of huge uh, big, big, big problems in the region and there is no need for another one. And besides, JCPOA was for the first time a project, a multilateral project uh, pushed by the Europeans to show how uh, peacemaking through dialogue is possible. And here I want to um, just uh, go on with what I mentioned earlier about the jokers. And that's why also uh, it's very important for the Europeans to be present at the international scenes. Um, at the diplomatic uh, parquet, it's very important that we have a look at the two jokers. At the moment, as you know, we have two jokers in the whole uh, behind the curtain JCPOA talks. One is Oman with Sultan Haitam, who is following the same path as the late Sultan Kabus. That means being a mediator. Install, uh, he uh, was very, very successful to um, get his profile because everybody thought when the late Sultan who was in Oman in power for um, about 50 years, it will be very difficult for the next one to get the same charisma and the same influence and power when it comes to problems like JCPOA and media, being a mediator. So Sultan Haitam, his majesty has uh, was very successful to install himself as a very reliable bridge builder. 
over the talks and over the weekend, all the parties talked to Oman. I'm aware of this, so this is not a secret. I can tell, uh, speak it out here right now. And Oman was urging all the parties for the peace in the world and for uh, the benefit of the results to a little bit focus on the wording focus on the approach and focus on the goal in mind when uh, saying no about something. So Oman urged people not always just to say first no, take it or leave it, but to change the approach into let's see what we have in common and let's start to work from there and let's develop the mutual interests. And then let's uh, put aside step by step the obstacles this is the one joker oman as you know the foreign minister anthony blinken and also wendy sherman had a lot of talks with oman also uh, president biden and even wendy sherman was sent to muscat lately to discuss yemen and jcpoa in person that shows how much oman plays a role as a mediator. The Iranian delegation exchanged uh, uh, opinions and approaches with the Omanian. As, and, and it was uh, very clear that they have the power, their reputation and the goodwill to be able to uh, influence all the parties for the sake of the talks. This is the joker number one. The second joker, which is not at all in the media and um, also not, also, uh, successful because uh, the jokers always can only be successful if they work behind the curtains without press you cannot google them and say okay he said this and she said this no second joker is uh, baroness catherine ashton the former uh, head of the european union's foreign policy and now the chairman of the wilson institute in washington the uh, european chair and she is also um, uh, in the house of lords as you know, she is uh, one of the most influential and most important uh, advisors to the Queen when it comes to foreign policy. And she is very, very good with Joe Biden. So she has contacts to all the important key players of the Americans when it comes to Joe Biden, because he was at that time of Obama when Lady Ashton was in office. He was deputy president, vice president of the United States. And uh, she's also very common with Wendy Sherman, with um, Mr. Anthony Blinken, and of course with the Iranians. The Iranian hardliner regime, they have a special respect for Catherine Ashton. And that's why she saw always the JCPOA as her personal baby. That's what she wanted to be in the books of history in 100 years, the European Union. Back to your question, what is the role of the European Union? The European Union achieved a real good peaceful deal, a multilateral deal by, based on a UN resolution that a problem which concerns the whole world can be resolved with the help of European Union through dialogue. And Catherine Ashton was asked to be behind the curtain, not in any official position, just to remind that uh, what is the purpose and what are the benefits of this deal. And I guess this joker can also be very helpful because the Iranians are glad that she wrote some comments on Iran uh, American newspapers like the Washington Post and others about the status quo during summer and before in January, she wrote a piece about JCPOA. So I'm, what I want to say is Oman and uh, mediators and helpers like Catherine Ashton, and do, let's don't forget John Kerry, who was the mentor of Anthony Blinken and who is now uh, for the representative of the United States for climate change. As you know, he is also involved. There is no week where the U uh, US team is not calling J John Kerry, asking him for advice and asking him for his opinion concerning approaches. As you know, when this Sherman was his deputy as a deputy foreign minister for nuclear affairs, she is still the deputy of Anthony Blinken, also for the nuclear affairs. So that's what I said at the beginning, chemistry, 80% of the deal and the success of a JCPOA 2.0 will depend of atmosphere, chemistry and trust. 
this is my deep belief uh, when it comes to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, what do I think for the future? 20% is the content and the real technical details. First, we must agree that we want a deal, then we can agree on the details of the deal. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, if we uh, look at European interest, of course, it is absolutely clear. Europe cannot have an interest that its whole neighborhood is instable. We do have troubles in the East. We do have troubles in Northern Africa, quite some instability. And of course, uh, of central importance will be the Middle East. And this is not only a political and stability interest, it's also an economic interest. Uh, Europe must have an in interest to have stable relationships on the one hand with Russia, with Turkey, and uh, already number three, uh, I guess would be Iran due to its huge uh, also economic potential. But uh, European interests will not decide. It will be decisive whether the Americans can follow their uh, main goals and their main orientation. And for the Americans, of course, their interest uh, does not lie anymore in the Middle East, but uh, in the Western Pacific area. Uh, they cannot have an interest for uh, any turbulences, further turbulences in the Middle East. And insofar, there should be a good basis and they cannot have an interest of uh, Iran becoming a nuclear power. And on the other hand, for Iran, of course, uh, not only people, but also the administration uh, is looking for a normal economic life and business. And therefore, obviously, there still is quite some hope that these no negotiations can be successful. Okay, let's look at this round. We will have in a few hours uh, probably first informations uh, what has happened. Expectations will not be very high from our side, I guess. Uh, I rather think, you know, that uh, maybe people will show a little bit more flexibility, but there cannot be big, uh, very specific results. And let's hope that negotiations will go on. I really want to thank uh, you, Dr. Arian Fall, uh, for your expertise, for your readiness uh, to be with us. I say thank you. And I also want to say thank you to uh, our audience. This probably will be our last EIS talk before Christmas. So far, I wish you very nice holidays and a very nice switch into the new year, hopefully without any problems with COVID-19 and I'm looking forward to meet again in 2022 with new challenges and with new answers for all those challenges. I heartily thank you also very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much also from my side. Pleasure like always. Uh, let me also wish you uh, the best for Christmas and the new year and hopefully we will witness soon better um, news about JCPOA and about problems in the world. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arian Fall, and all the best to you. So, hello?